Hi everyone and welcome back to the Digital Writers Festival, hashtag DWF15. Um, today we've got a very special event, it's uh, called Trapped Inside the Computer, an interview inside a video game. Um, and we're joined with our two, our interviewer and our interviewee. Our interviewer is Katie Williams. Um, she's a journalist, a writer, consultant and communications professional now based in California. Um, she's especially well known for her work in highlighting the cultural impact and development of video games, but she also has a keen interest in social media and marketing and innovative technologies. Um, she's been published in a bunch of publications, and it, I'd be incredibly surprised if you haven't come across work from Katie. Um, she's appeared in PC Gamer, GameSpy, PC Powerplay, IGN, Kotaku, The Escapist, uh, games.on.net and Unwinnable, and her website in which she's collected a bunch of um, her work is alivetinyworld.com. Um, our interviewee uh, is games designer and writer Andrew Brophy, um, who's based in Melbourne and who attempts to provoke certain emotions with his work using humour, bizarre stories and a lurid visual style, which you'll come to see over the next half an hour. Outside of making games, he's also responsible for starting Brain Gale, which is a collective of artists and designers. And um, we'll, we'll start by playing a bunch of games from Andrew. Uh, and if you guys want to play along, a lot of them are downloadable either for free or for a pay-what-you-want price uh, at andrewbrophy.net. So you can kind of jump in and, and uh, you can download them and play along uh, as, we, as the interview goes along. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to um, just jump into the interview. So join Katie and Andrew as they move through Andrew's video game worlds and discuss the craft of game writing and criticism while low gra gravity roughhousing, collecting cat coins, and participating in radical dystopian death racer death rallies. Okay, over to you. Thanks a lot, Connor. Hey, All right, thanks. Andrew, what are we starting off with? Oh man, it's already cutting out. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, tell us about the first game you're starting off with today. Okay, I'll hit up good old screen share, get it running. Um, so the first game that I'm showing is one I made when I was, I think, roughly 15 or so. Uh, so okay. how old is this game? Happening. Uh, how old are you? Uh, 21, turning 22. So it's wow. Old. Okay, so it's quite old. Yeah. So yeah, the reason yeah, I'll start it up. Yeah, the reason I wanted to show this game is kind of just show, I guess, progression or something, because I think this is kind of the first time I really kind of got an eye for like a a style I wanted to go for myself. Uh, it was also the first time, like, you know, it was about, I think, the year before I made this game is kind of when my family first got, like, a proper internet connection, and I started actually, you know, going online, looking into properly making games and finding communities and stuff. So, you know, I uh, kind of... When you, you were know, 15, a, you were 15. 15. What, what made you decide, I want to tell a story in a video game as opposed to any other medium? I don't know many 15-year-olds who would think of games. What made you think of games? I don't know. I've kind of always... Felt I had to entertain people some way. Okay. I mean, like that's kind of how I've always. I don't know. I've kind of like. I don't want to music down a bit. I've kind of had this kind of vanity thing, I suppose. It's probably not that bad. It's just ambition. But like, I've kind of always wanted to make something of myself in some field. But you know, not be world famous, but just like make you know, like stand out in some in some scene. Just make some sort of impact just for myself. Right. I mean. So for me, games, okay. right? I liked playing them when I was a kid, and now, you know, I, I haven't made any massive hits or anything, but like I've definitely made like a lot of tiny small games, and I've, you know, I've made some stuff that's really, I'm, you know, I'm quite proud of. And this game, even though it's, you know, no technological marvel, it's kind of, you know, it's interesting to me. It's, it's something I look back on. I still think it looks good. I still think, you know, it's, yeah. All right. Tell us I'm what's honest. what's what's going on here. Tell us about this world and this guy with a television head. Okay, sure. So, I mean, one thing is uh, that probably explains this uh, this whole setup of what it looks like. I'll just zoom out. I, you know, I, I don't, I never studied video games. I never took any courses or really had any proper formal way of teaching. I just kind of taught myself, right? Uh, so, and for me, like, you know, 3D games, that's where I was at. I was just like, yeah, I want to make a 3D game. So it's really kind of cool world you can kind of explore and look around. And... You know, I, I think I googled like you know how to make 3D games, and nothing really worked out. So I, uh, I, was, I was looking at um, Game Maker, which is the, pro uh, the program I use to make games still today, which I made this in, and there was like really limited documentation on how to make 3D things, and they even warn you like don't even bother, it's not worth it. But you know, 
I persevered. Uh, and kind of the reason why it has the style is actually due to limitations, where you can only draw really basic shapes, like, you know, cubes and spheres and, and cones. Yep. So it's, it's kind of where I went with this. And then, you know, it was all black and white, and I was like, that's kind of boring. So the very background is literally any bright color you can think of. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of how this turned out. Um, and I mean, like, I don't know, I look at it now, like, look back at, like, maybe in, like, a, you know, in my mid-teens and thinking, like, it's kind of this really angsty kind of, cutesy game where like you know people just like tell you really kind of cryptic messages and give you vague warnings like you know I don't know how I got here what am I doing uh, I don't but would you say this is an autobiographical game well I'd probably you know go as far as say every game is kind of autobiographical to some extent I mean like when it's okay. made by the person I mean that's that's kind of how I feel I mean you know I mean I think the whole general theme of this game is you know being lost I, I, I kind of skipped over the text at the start but basically the idea is you're given just this message just from this voice. Just it just says at the bottom. It's just people looking for this this criminal called Tiger Shower. You don't know what he did, what he looks like, anything. But people are looking for him. You don't know if you're looking for him or if he's just someone you have to look out for. Right? It, it kind of feels like to me there's two different sort of stories going at once. Uh, you're just doing your own thing, just exploring this world, and then uh, and then on top of that, there's this whole kind of ominous kind of vibe to it. Like you know, the music's just kind of this, but it's small, like kind of piano loop and everything is just kind of, you know, going at your own pace, but still very dangerous. So for me, I think, like, the autobiographical kind of sense of this game is, you know, you're a teenager, you're your mid-teen, you kind of feel lost because you don't know what you're doing with your life. That's self-appreciating, as that sounds. So, yeah. I'm also really bad at this game still. <laughs> <laughs> which was another thing which was kind of unintentional because, like, you know, I, I just release small games on, on forums and stuff, and then this game, you know, I think it's got like 800,000 downloads within a couple of weeks. And like, you know, as a kid, like, you know, I mean, sure, it's a free game, but that's pretty, that's pretty intense. You know, that many people yeah, playing. Yeah, especially for a 15-year-old. Yeah, and so that was kind of, I, I think I made probably about a dozen or so games before this, but nothing really stood out, like for competitions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this game just really spoke to people, I suppose. And like, even on like the old game maker forums, it's kind of like a weird cult here, in a way. Like, it won like a lot of competitions on the there, and people still talk about it now, even though I don't brought it those forums at all. I kind of broke the game as well. I'm trying to press it. <laughs> Tell me about how you designed the characters, the little dudes with TV heads. Um, what was the idea behind that? I mean, like, I'd be lying if I, you know, if I didn't say this kind of because it looked kind of cool. Um, and again, back to the limitation thing, squares and yeah. rectangles kind of work. But I mean, like, it's it's something I kind of really want to explore more, right? And I kept thinking of, like, sequels to this game, which kind of are really completely different, where, like, you could change your, like, you know, you could change your face and you change what you look like. You know, like, I like the idea that, like, everyone's kind of the same, so this one kind of defining thing they do about themselves, which is just what's displayed on their face. I'm going to restart the game because I broke it, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's cool. I'm great. I'll be I'll be pro. But yeah, so that's kind of where I I went with this game. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to yeah make everyone is kind of the same in it, but then like just one defining thing, which like again it's not touched on in the game, but it's kind of like by choice to some extent, or like in in a lot of it, it kind of reflects how people are feeling. Like it's kind of like it's kind of like a mood ring for their face. It's like their expression is is what uh, they're feeling. So, for example, your character is static because they're lost. Okay. Super deep. Yeah, I saw another one with, so like, like, a heart for a face. It's very yeah, cute. Yeah, so this guy's got a question mark, and he's lost as well. But, like, again, cool. like, yeah, and then I think the person might be, yeah, they have all the colored bars. I think they just say, oh, like, yeah. really silly things, though. <laughs> <laughs> um... He's got an X, kind of what he says. Yeah, and yeah, that's the thing. It feels kind of like angsty, you know, I'm, I'm 15 years old. They say cryptic things, but like, you know, it's, it's probably better than keeping the poetry under my bed, I suppose. So you made this when you were 15, and obviously a lot of people have, you know, a lot of people like this game. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the interactivity is a part of that. I mean you could write about your angsty feelings like in a poem yeah. or something, but there's something special about, you know, actually playing this character with a static face. What do you make of it? Like, do you think the interactivity is a huge part of it? 
as in the fact that he's got a static face, is, is that kind of like? Oh, I, I mean, like, um, I guess, I guess players like, you know, players really dig this game. Do you think how much of that is because of interactivity? Do you think, like, why? Why would this work better than just this as a short movie, for example? I think because, like, I mean, obviously you can interpret films and basically any other medium in whatever, whichever way you want, but I think, I don't know, I think games kind of give this feeling a lot better, especially because, like, you know, being in my early 20s now, growing up in the 90s and, and that, and kind of having, like, you know, moving into video games being such a big thing of culture now, it kind of, like, you know, it, it speaks to a lot more people, like, people kind of have this yeah. kind of, like, one game they kind of they look back on and think about and how that kind of really was part of their childhood. So, like, a game can kind of represent how you felt as well. I mean, like, especially for a lot of game developers my age now, they kind of got into it by similar means. Um, it's, it's interesting because I both grew up making games as well as playing them. So, and like by that, I actually also don't really feel like I kind of fit the whole game that kind of vibe because I don't even play that many games. I mean, I don't even own any next gen consoles or anything like that. So, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And like, did making games like this and having lots of people play them kind of make me jaded towards actually playing heaps of them and making that part of my identity? So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the reason I'm playing this game right now, seven years later, is because I still feel lost. Oh, did you actually feel lost? Sorry? Do you actually still feel lost? I don't know, <laughs> You seem I'll to have a pretty good mean, grasp of who you are now. Sorry? You seem to have a pretty good grasp of who you are now. Oh, thank you. Great. What do you now? I'm going to cheat here. It's like, this game takes forever. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of the other thing which is kind of interesting when you speak about interactivity of this game. It's actually like, and this is something I really learned in, in terms of becoming a video game designer, it's really actually a hard game. The fact like that I'm actually okay at it is obviously because I made it, but like people hated it like as much as they liked it as well, because but they also wanted to finish it to see where it went because it's you know so cryptic. Um, the thing is people do like the ending as well. I, I haven't heard any bad things, which is okay. But I don't know. Interesting. I'm going to give this three more shots, and if I don't get it, I'll just move on because I'm getting angry. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like I was saying at the start, I think this game does go does, like, really far to show the kind of games I really start to like playing and making, though. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really a game. It's, like, as far as people who are, like, as far as gamey kind of terms go, there's no real, you know, there's no combat. The only real thing that's going on here is just trying to navigate the landscape, which, you know, it's kind of like a, it's like a staple in games. You know, just being able to navigate is this kind of a thing, and this, that's a whole challenge to it. So, okay, no, sorry, I'll do one more, so angry. Um, yeah. Oh my god, I got it. Alright. <laughs> Such a terrible game. Why would you make me play it again? Well, I actually like it. Um, I think if I was playing this, I would get quite frustrated at how many times I'd have to die. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Okay. We'll move on from this. <laughs> All right. Okay, so yeah, that's. I made that when I was mid teens, so I'd like to think anything I made after that kind of. You know, you can kind of see where that came from. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so, um, probably... so ne next, I will show you. Uh, I quickly want to show actually another game I like that I made not too long ago. Okay. Uh, called Millions. Um, I made this just within probably like two days, just while I was with a bunch of other people, um, and we're just testing out different ideas, just making, trying to have a departure from the normal big kind of ambitious things we make and just make something completely different. So this one's called Millions. Uh, just zoom in. Um, so yeah, 
for me, I wanted to depart from having lots of colors in my games and just kind of make something, you know, literally black and white. Like, the only bit of color you see is, is the tie on the character. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I want to... Uh, because, because of the kind of games I make, uh, I usually focus on visuals first. Uh, and then I kind of design a game around that. I kind of think of, like, you know, I'll, I'll just be drawing and I'll, I'll have kind of some style and then it'll, it'll be that. Whereas with this game, I kind of want to think of a mechanic and then work visuals into that. So I made literally okay. the game in this game is to, is, is to do with colors. Um, so uh, in this, all you can do is move around. Whenever you are in the air, the screen fades to black, which is also the same color as all the obstacles in the environment yourself. The only oh, way well, okay. The only way you can see yourself is just the tie in the air, and also the camera stops, so you can kind of get a bit, uh, a bit of a better idea of your, of your uh, spatial awareness, I suppose. So, yeah, again, this is like I'd like to think it, it looks back on Takasha because this is again just about navigating your environment, and the environment is a hazard. Even though it's you know it's safe to walk around normally, when you're in the air, you just you know you're literally up in the air. Anything could kind of you could fall, or eventually we'll get to some hazards down here. I like how you've turned the convention of platforming on its head here. With platformers, I mean, the world doesn't disappear when you jump, usually. Yeah, so it's exactly. actually kind of terrifying to watch this and to, you know, jump on that moving platform, for example, but know that the world is going to disappear when you do it. Yeah. You might but, not land on a platform. Yeah. It's quite the, symbolic in a way, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'd like to think so. I mean, it's, it's pretty terrifying. I, I leave it pretty easy up until about this point. Because, yeah, in, in normal platformers, you, you know, you, you take those kind of things for granted. You take, oh, okay, I, I know, like, once you get the controls and kind of the feel of it, you kind of get it, you know, people, you can speed run it, you can do whatever. Like, in, in games like Mario, I mean, if you played it a bunch, you just hold the run button nonstop because you know how to play the game. Whereas this, yeah. like, you know, I've played it a heap. I've, I've played it nonstop, showing people and, and making it, and still, it's terrifying. Um, and then, right here, I introduce having white as well. So it kind of, it, yeah, it adds this kind of, this element of you can't see where you're going, and then it kind of makes you feel safer getting through there, and then we add another part, away from white again. Super this terrifying. part looks truly terrifying. Truly, right? So, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of like whenever you make a game like this that's just like one long path, you, you kind of introduce things gradually, and then kind of keep ramping it up, whereas I kind of introduce them individually here, and then it ramps up to, it's kind of ridiculous actually, I don't like it to be honest, but like, so you know, you get through those two and it's like, oh, okay. And my favorite part is right here of the whole game, because you just, you can't get past, and then eventually, like, you teach the player to use everything they've learned in that the last few minutes, and there's yeah. invisible. But yeah, terror, Ab absolutely terror. So, okay, uh, playing the game Takeshawa, um, there was a lot of you and that, a lot of 15-year-old you feeling lost and that sort of thing. What parts of you do you think are in this game? Well, that's the thing, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> like, like, like I said, I, I do think every, uh, you know, everyone who makes a game, no matter how big or small, if it's, if it's just made by a single person, like, you know, you can kind of really see that person. And obviously, the bigger a team, the more it's, it's spread out and it's multiple people and it's kind of hard to see that, that one vision. Whereas this game, I... That's the thing. I I don't know. Is my whole my whole theming with all my games just being lost? Like I don't even know. I don't know. Um, in this game, I see more confrontation. It's like I'm still lost, but I'm confronting the darkness in my life so that I can, you know, overcome it. Yeah. That's what I get out of it anyway. Well, there's one part here. I actually originally I had it in, but it felt kind of too evil. So this is kind of what I guess kids call the end of the game. It's only really short. I made this like you know within probably a day and a half or so. Um, you know, you get to here, and this is kind of the last part, and then you drop down here at the end. Originally, I had it, you were still left up on that top platform, and then as you jump, you could read in white text, it would say, now turn back, and you'd have to play the whole game in reverse. Oh, uh, wow. But without being able to save your location. Right, okay. And I had that in, and I had a few people play it, and honestly, it felt kind of, like, I don't know, like, the thing is, I, I'm not really too clear on, like, what the message I think here is. Like, I mean, I definitely do agree. I think it's kind of about, you know, confrontation. But 
that felt kind of counterintuitive for that. And then even here, I had it, you know, it, it would just say up into the distance, it would say the end in Y. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know, like, I, I just kind of wanted to leave it here and just see what people thought. So, I'm, I'm, what do most players think of this game? Have you had much feedback? Um, not as much as previous games. I mean, again, it was just a small kind of experiment. But, I mean, people kind of dig it. I mean, I get, I got a few emails from it, actually, and people were just like, you know, I... Is, is this is this the end? And <laughs> well, I mean, which totally makes sense. You know, you get to a game, it either it loops forever, or you are told this is the end. You get credits, you yeah. get, the game loops. Whereas you can't restart this game; it's just stuck in this state. If I if I lose, I'm stuck back up here. And that was kind of like going back with the whole the theming that I said about uh, telling people to turn back. You can actually still do that; it just doesn't tell you. And that's what I would tell people. It's like, have you tried playing it backwards? And then they're like, oh my god. But then I felt kind of bad because there's actually no reward, and yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably like the most experimental I've had in a while in terms of what I actually wanted to do, like the themings of games, but yeah. All right. And is there any significance behind the name Millions? Um, well, originally my first start of the game, it was actually about being a banker, and you can I'm not sure if you can see it, but it, there's all these tiny like notes flying through the air. Oh, is that what they are? I seem to have leaves. Yeah, well, exactly. That's I kind of left it like that. And actually, there's no sounds in the game, but I left a YouTube link on the bottom of this web page that actually has links to the sound of wind blowing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Like again, this is kind of like it feels like a failed experiment, but not because I still like you know a lot of people really dug kind of the idea, but I didn't know how far I could take it. And something I still probably like to explore again, like something about you know. I'm, I'm into this mechanic, basically, but I don't exactly know where I'd like to take that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's move All on. All right. Okay. Um, All right. And for our viewers out there, I just want to say that you can ask us questions anytime. So you could um, tweet, is it Andrew Brophy? At Andrew Brophy? Yep, that's correct. If you wanted to ask Andrew any questions about his games, and uh, don't forget to check us out on the DWF15 hashtag as well. All right, sorry about that. What's next? Okay. So this is another game. I should probably explain um, as well that last game and this one I'm about to show, which is called Moody, they're both made for uh, what's basically called a video game EP. Um, Brango, which is the collective that I made, uh, we you know, we, a lot of us would kind of, we, we make these kind of games together. It's really small kind of, you know, jam kind of games, I suppose. Um, and then we, we decided to kind of just release a bunch of our small projects together and title it an EP and just, you know, it's got a track list and you can just play them together and kind of, it was kind of about framing games. Um, obviously, Millions wasn't made specifically for that. And uh, when it came time for us to make another one, I actually decided to try and make, you know, a game specific to what, would, what I think is like a video game EP. And... I made this game, which is Moody, which I have described as a, I guess, an interactive music video. Okay. So yeah, it's very, it's very light in terms of uh, what you do, but I think it's kind of very pretty, I suppose. Anyway, I'll, I'll let it start. So you start it as well by using the mouse and then clicking this guy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. If I can get it to work. <laughs> if there's one regret, it's not making this part easier. But I think they kind of also works. We'll talk about it later. This one I totally thought about. <laughs> it's mesmerizing to watch. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Tell us about it. What what were you okay, hoping so for the player to feel when the, playing this? Sorry? What were you hoping the player would feel when playing this? Um I don't exactly know what I was hoping for them to feel, but like uh so the whole theme for this whole EP is collection of games. Uh which this one was like the the first game in it, the, the title track I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um the the theme for the whole the whole collection was architects, right? So you know we we okay. can take that as well. Uh, for me, making this as broad as it sounds, the game's actually kind of about life in a way. So I'll leave it Luke in the background actually, just while we talk about it. Um, so uh, okay. So yeah, it's it's kind of about life as 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 broad as that sounds. Um, so up until the point where you actually come out as like the man, the parachute, you're actually that's when you first assume control. So and then like yeah, so first there's this rocket, and then out pops an egg, and then suddenly you're there and you're in control. Uh, and then <laughs> such a such a weird game. Um, <laughs> I've never explained it like in this way. It just sounds really silly when I think about it. But like yeah, so basically you get hit by these obstacles. Again, life. You can get knocked right off screen as well to the point where you can't even see where you are and it can actually break the game. Um, and at any point as well, you can hold down and just drop. But it's never really explained like what happens when you collect those stars. But I mean, like again, because you know, if you have some sort of literacy to what game, you just assume you know collectibles. Oh, okay, that'll help me later on. Whereas it actually does nothing. Um, to be honest, it's like the whole game itself is also kind of about, I guess, really lightly. It's kind of about. I guess, uh, you know, mental health to an extent, like in this part, which also kind of fits in both ways with the whole architect thing, you actually basically build up this fort to protect yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's kind of about, I guess, adding your emotions and, and building up your, your own fortress and then what that means, I suppose, um, and, just, and just dealing with problems. I mean, yeah, it, it's pretty vague, uh, but it's, it's kind of left that way. So I, I, I kind of want to touch on that thing, but also, like, not, if that makes sense. <laughs> so um, this was part of a video game EP you called it, is that right? Yeah. So um, what were the other games in this EP? Like, how did they build on the theme? Um, so one of the other games, actually, uh, there's... They're all pretty ambiguous towards the theme, which I think was really great. We all kind of, you know, we didn't really talk too much about what we're making, and then it kind of came together. They all kind of worked, but didn't together. Like, in terms of architects, just as, you know, in terms of buildings. There's one game that took it pretty literally. It's about, you know, climbing a tower, and you know, it's, it's uh, action kind of based. You know, you fight monsters and that. And it felt very gamey, and it was kind of great having, like, that kind of game there. And then... On top of that, uh, we had this other game, which is more kind of like a performance art piece, if, if you want to go as far as to call it that. Uh, it was hosted on Twitch, where people, it, it was meant to be kind of a riff on uh, the whole like Twitch plays Pokemon and those kind of games, where people in the chat room would actually interact and play the game by typing in the keys. Mm -hmm. So we, we had one performance of it, and 
it went for about, I think, just under an hour. And at the very end, the, the developer goes, oh, by the way, I was actually just pressing random keys the whole time, and they just deleted the game. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like, wow. Signed off. And, again, it's, it's, I mean, that's kind of a joke, I suppose, but at the same time, I think it just works so well that, you know, like, the kind of the tone of the games we had, like, you know, this game, it's, I mean, I called it moody as well because, like, each kind of scene is kind of meant to represent, like, similar, like, like uh, sorry, different feelings towards, like, the same sort of feeling, like, you know, like, again, feeling lost, feeling, feeling like you have to build up some sort of wall about, around yourself. Yeah. But, that, yeah, that's how I took that. And then, yeah, and then there were other games about exploring these different spaces and, and spatial relations, and if you can control your space, it's, I mean, I, I know I kind of organized this EP, but everyone should definitely check it out. It's really good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's moody, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I'm cool to move on. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, one, one thing I should get as well. Uh, we showed kind of three games uh, that are pretty. Uh, it sounds kind of like they're pretty serious, you know, being lost and everything. I, I kind of like in in that description as well that I kind of had for myself, like that I put for this this festival. Uh, I, I like using, you know, I like using bright colors. I like games being short to the point, um, but I also liked funny games, right? Like, it it actually takes a lot to make a game that's kind of humorous, but not just you know, gamey humor, I suppose. Uh, so that's where Go Long comes in. Um, this game was also made in just under two days. Uh, I made it with some other people. You can look at the credits. Um, yeah, and this game is. Pretty much just about humor. It's it's kind of like I'd like to think like this game if if games didn't exist and this was like you know ten years ago or so it'd just be like a cartoon, right? Like like a short. But you know I, I just a sec, I'll turn it up. So I'll play through one one game of it. Uh, turn it up. But yeah, this is basically just to make a game that's one hundred percent about humor. Uh, not really any underlying message. Uh, I'll 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 play it then then it'll explain itself I suppose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the teeth on that guy. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm feeling kind of thirsty. Oh, I can feel the sweat sipping out of my pores. Oh, I feel it. That was amazing. Sorry? Part of, part of me doesn't know what I just watched, but, I, <laughs> but that was also quite enchanting in a way. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's an ending one found. So that's basically Go Long in a nutshell. Uh, I'll try and explain it now. So it was made for a, uh, a competition where the theme was you only get one. Uh, again, like, usually whenever, like, game jams come around, I usually take a bit to, to think about it and... I usually try and see what other people are kind of thinking as well for it, and a lot of people went with the idea that it's like, uh, you know, you only get one weapon, you only get one life, that sort of thing. Like, you know, really, yeah. again, video gamey kind of things. Whereas I wanted to, like, I told myself before, like, the whole humor aspect went into it, I was like, I want this to be a thing, like, that ties into the narrative. 
So kind of the backstory to this game is you you're a child athlete who this is he's like you know he's make it or break it kind of shot. You have you have one chance just to to basically to win. Uh, and also at the same time, in game you only have one minute to kind of decide what to do. So I'll open up here. Um, and yeah, basically, you know, we had people around uh, who, were in, who wanted to do voice acting. We were just like, let's go for it. Let's make this just this really over-the-top kind of ridiculous kind of adventure. So you select just one of these options of what you can do, as you saw. Um, and yeah, they actually do affect the outcome as well, which is one of the big things we're doing because we're actually updating this game and we're going to make it a full-on story. It'll be great. But the one thing people always ask me about it was, can you actually win the game? Because it kind of just ends and you fly into space. <laughs> so... Can you? Is he growing? Is he really big? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My one regret was making it so you couldn't win. <laughs> so. How many endings are there? Um, five so far. I won't trouble for the rest. But yeah, so yeah, Go Along was for me. I uh, I kind of you know I kind of subtly considered you know stories and ideas and stuff. I just wanted to make a game that was purely just about you know it's really it's kind of nothing really on the like underneath the surface. It's just it's a funny game about a poor child athlete. <laughs> And his his big day basically, um, and again I think it turned out well. Coincidentally though, we didn't actually get to win the award for humor, which was really sad. Oh no! <laughs> well, I thought it was very humorous. Thank you. Yeah, so that's that's go long. <laughs> I do like um how go long, like you said, a lot of the other people who made games to this theme went for very gamey ideas. And you didn't. That seems to be a thing with you. Yeah. Like, you seem to quite enjoy taking, you know, what we know and expect from video games and turning that on its head and being like, no, nope, we're going to do this instead. I find it really fascinating. I, the thing is, I, I, there's so many people making video games now, right? Like, so many. And so many people make so many of, like, the same thing. I, I honestly don't see, like, I mean, why you'd kind of want to bother <laughs> To be honest, I mean, like, that, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, there should be more people just making things for the sake of it. Like, this game is this game is ridiculous. Um, I, I'll give it that. And it's probably like, you know, you could ask anyone, like, in, in the in the industry, and they're like, there's there's nothing really for this game. You can't market this or anything. What would you, how would you even describe this game to someone who's never seen it, right? Yeah. And I think that kind of works for a lot of my games. But, you know, it's, it's, it's fun, I suppose. I, I don't... I, I don't, don't try to make games that are about fun, but I think it's fun making them. <laughs> I, I like confusing people. I mean, like, after I released this game on Twitter, all I just kept getting messages were for a week. All they, all they would just say is, are you proud of me, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to think, like, you know, like if, even if it's just one person kind of gets something out of this game, right, like, Maybe at one point in their life they were a child athlete and then they like video games as well. They, you know, it, it touches someone. I think that's kind of the important thing as just like an independent designer. You know, I'm not restrained to make certain things or conform to anything. It's just literally make what I want. That's kind of like one of the best things about this. If I'm making a game and it's just not going the right way, I can either change it completely or scrap it altogether. Um, 
And I like to think Golong's a testament to that, you know. <laughs> Golong is like the, the free spirited nature of, of what it means to be able to make games by yourself. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Completely cut out. But yeah. So that's Golong. Alright. Um okay. So the last game of mine that I'll show, it's a game called Francis. Uh, can find it. Oh my god. Right. Have we been playing all of these in chronological order? Um, so is this like your most recent out of ones you're showing us? Yeah, actually we have. That's that's really smart of me. <laughs> <laughs> so we are witnessing the evolution of Andrew Brophy. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like. Well, let's see what you've evolved into then. Okay, so this game I released was it last year. Um, it was for a Kickstarter uh, for a game called Lioness, if anyone's heard of it. Again, I'll zoom in. If I can, probably not. Okay, so this game's called Francis. Again, very story-based. It's something I really want to get into, making games with stories. Uh, but again, being me, it's not a very good story. Mm. Or it's not good. This is... Interesting. You've got the spaceship theme going again. Oh yeah, that's, I don't even know, I just love space. <laughs> you didn't want to be an astronaut? So, I mean, right away, we kind of, I, I one sort of theme I kind of like within storytelling within games is, so many of them kind of start off at like this this point of like, you know, like uh, you're, you're right at the point where like, you know, some prophecy happens or just some sort of defining event. Whereas with this, I want it to be like you're midway through a story. You get here, and there's no real explanation to what you're doing, because then again, it's a, it's a video game. You can you can do whatever you want. So you you get here, and you're midway through this conversation between Francis, who's the the guy there, and his uh his space companion. I guess is an alien thing called Smokey, who's also very obnoxious. I've noticed you don't typically use a lot of text to tell the stories in your games. Yeah, it's actually like, to be honest... A lot sorry. of mainstream games like, rely so heavily on, you know, big cutscenes full of exposition and that sort of thing. Mm. It's actually interesting to see how sparsely it is text here. Mm. So that's actually, like, that's legit what I was thinking when I made this game. I wanted it to be kind of about, like, you know, there's not too many, again, gaming elements. Uh, it's about the text, but at the same time... Like, the kind of the reason why I guess I got into games over any other medium was, like, you know, I always wanted to tell stories in some way, but I was never too confident about writing. Uh, and writing stories, I was always more visual. So even here, like, I, I couldn't take it too seriously. And, like, the characters talk with spelling errors. <laughs> yeah, I, I was about to ask that. <laughs> All right, so that was done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wrecked the whole question. But okay. Again, it's kind of like with the dialogue, it's kind of like a, a joke towards video games. Like, you know, like older ones that didn't really have too much text. It's just like, oh, okay, go to all these worlds, collect these things, no big deal. Like, that's that's kind of like what they're saying. Um, plus, I just want to make this joke here. <laughs> make like a dream big one. Anyway. So, yeah, basically the only real gaming element of this game uh, is being able to shoot. Uh, but again... I'll spoil it. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's just a thing that's there. <laughs> okay. um, and yeah, the description I have for this game is uh, it's join Francis and Smokey for the uh, Crystal Meltdown disaster. So, yeah. You collect magic things. I like how they're just magic and things. You haven't specified what they actually are. <laughs> The, the whole idea is you, you collect these magic things and avoid sludge. Uh, I guess it's kind of like a, an in-joke, but I uh, at the Free Play Festival like two years ago, I made a joke about comparing making games to being like a sludge monster making a cake. So <laughs> I made a note to, uh, to always kind of involve sludge or slime in many of my major things now. <laughs> oh yeah, actually, I'll, I'll kind of explain actually how that works. So when you're making games, right, 
you imagine you're making a cake. Uh, and you put all the ingredients in a bowl and you get a whiskey, you start whiskey around you, flour, eggs, etc. Um, the problem is you're also a sludge monster, so when you're whisking, your sludge starts getting in it, right? Uh, and so, you know, what do you do? Do you try and make a new cake, even though your sludge is getting it again? Or do you just accept it, you know? Do you leave your sludge to just stay there and fester, and the cake becomes part of you because literally your sludge is inside it? <laughs> That's kind of how I feel like every game is kind of autobiographical in some way. The fact that you're making it makes it about you. You put yourself into it. You put your kind of experiences into it, I suppose. I mean, like, you make a game about, like, driving cars, but you've only ever seen red cars. The car is most likely going to be red, right? Whereas if someone else is making a game about blue cars, so, you know. So it's the same sort of thing. I mean, like, it feels kind of obvious, but, like, you know, that's, that's kind of how I, I feel about it. Okay. Yeah. So this game for me, right? Right. If I didn't know who you were and I was playing this game, I would assume you're very much into space and colors. And also well, that you, you like confuse people. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I mean, like the other things as well. Like when I get to know people better, uh, and like I talk to them online and stuff, I, I will legit just write like an idiot. To be completely honest, I will <laughs> I will you know spelling areas. I like Smokey is basically me guiding you around. That's 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 how the story works. Um, but at the same time, uh, like when you're playing a multiplayer game, for example, like against a friend, the it's, it's you versus another person, right? But when you're playing a single player game like this, it's kind of more about like you know the player versus the designer, which is me. So usually with games like this, I try to put myself in in a really obvious kind of sense. Like technically, I'd like to think like you're playing as me, but like then I'm with you. If that makes sense, like you're playing with and against me. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. So how how do you think this? Would well, appeal to someone of... who doesn't know you at all, just a random person who stumbled upon your game on the internet. How do you, what, what do you think that would make of this, or any of your other games? Um, well, I know for a fact, uh, I got a couple of emails. I started uh, in the past couple of years actually including like in the text file just my email address and saying, hey, if you thought anything about this game or you know if there's a problem with it, just email me. You know, I'd love to hear what you think. And people actually started doing it, which is great. I mean, like more so than usual sort of message or or whatever. So, um, so I got messages from this game, and people were like, "Hey, is English your first language? Because there's a lot of spelling mistakes." <laughs> <in this." laughs> and like, I had people like offering to help me like fix up the typos and stuff. And I was like, "Oh, no, nah, that's okay." <laughs> I do love how all the typos is actually a part of this game. Yeah, like it's it it's really totally it. Sorry. I think it really adds to it. Definitely, like, I, like uh, most of the positive messages I got were uh, people saying, like, you know, these guys are such characters, I would love a full game, like, starring these two. Uh, but yeah, which is interesting as well, because with this game, I did want to still make kind of like a serious message. Well, not just a serious message, but kind of like touched on more serious things, but again, it's, I couldn't do it. Like, I, I still, just, I couldn't make a serious game, I don't think I probably ever will. You know, I can't make a game that's not, that's not something dumb. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what that means about me either. It's like I'm constantly lost, and I have to be dumb. <laughs> Maybe it's like a deep down fear of growing up. I don't know. It's getting too deep for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going to say I wonder if um I I think you do have it in you to be serious. I think the first game you showed me especially. I mm -hmm. I think I could interpret that as quite a serious game in some ways. Well, again, it was, it was unintentional. Like, everything about that game, people playing it, liking it, and, you know, I guess it was the catalyst to me really getting into making games, but, you know, it, it was all unintentional. So, I guess I should probably describe what's happening here because I really don't think I should loop around this game. As you collect the, the magic things, the diamonds, whatever they're called, uh, as you can tell, it starts distorting the whole game, right? The trees start moving yeah. in colors and then it's just splashing. And eventually, when you collect the, the second last one, the seven all up, uh, you, there's basically there's a mirror image of you that moves around the same pattern, but because of the glitching, it, you know, it, it eventually changes path. Uh, and in the dialogue, basically, Smokey's he's starting to get worried about you. He's like, you know, hey, maybe we should stop touching this magic. It's it's mm -hmm. not it's not helping us. It's not doing anything. And your character, for instance, is just like, I don't care. 
right? Like, I'll do whatever I want sort of thing. Um, and then eventually, like, as the screen flashes, these sludge monsters actually turn into, like, the pictures of people, and they're, like, worried. It's random, though, so we see it. Oh, there it is, there. So they wow. kind of And they, they stop. They still hurt you, but they, they just stop, and they've got the hands in the head, and they're just worried, right? Like, I mean, like, if, if I'm being kind of, like, just pointed out, but, like, not intentionally, the game's kind of about, I guess, you know, again, losing yourself, though, not feeling lost, but, like, kind of, you know, knowing people who kind of had problems and kind of, how you would deal with that. I mean, like, the players, like, you know, like, I like to think I identify with Smokey in a lot when I think about this game, like, in relation to myself, right? Like, knowing people kind of having problems and not knowing how to deal with it, and you just kind of see it unfold in front of you, but, you know, you can't do anything about it. I mean, yeah, serious things, but again, I couldn't, I, I couldn't bring myself to actually make a 100% serious game. So, anyway, this is basically one of the puzzles that, like, actually, the only puzzle that's ever presented to you, but you'll never know how to fix it until you get all the way through the game, where you need to stay on both pads at once, and you always think it's you and Smokey that have to do it, and everyone just gets stuck here trying to figure out how to get both players to stay on the pads, whereas it's never about Smokey because he could never actually help you. Eve, probably. <laughs> Again, kind of unfortunate because this is sort of random. There we go. So you get the last one, hopefully. There we go. Get the last one. Okay. Oh, yeah, Francis, maybe this magic is too much to handle. Shut it, Smokey. <laughs> Nothing, right? Like, he's completely shut him out at this point. Uh, and this is usually where players either get stuck or they kind of just get what to do, but the whole game is distorted. It's just, it's... There's nothing. You, you can't figure it out. If you try and read anything, it's just there's nothing there. And even here, this is, you get people think maybe I have to leave now, Brian. And you, you can barely even read it, but it does say if there's no, there's no leaving this place now, unfortunately. That's like, okay. Is um, that the end? And the only other thing is there's a hint for it. Uh, we see tombstones occasionally, and you go to the grave, and your life starts going away, and then suddenly you're dead. But again, you're not dead, you just kind of fade out. And then, again, not sure if you can read it, but you've got a bit of a quote here. It says, are the dead truly as lonesome as the living? Whoa, video games, right? That was kind of a horrifying ending. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, what a bummer. <laughs> I know. And then once you eventually run out of life, it changes to what it says when you usually die. If it'll happen in a second now, probably not. Yeah, that's, oh yeah, you died a reasonable death. Thanks. A reasonable death? That's, <laughs> that's comforting. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's Francis. A wow. serious, silly game that, again, I think everything I kind of made up to this point kind of, you know, it, it, it makes sense, basically. Wow, okay. So um, we seem to be running a bit over time. Was there one more game you wanted to show us? Well, that's all of my games. I think we'll actually finish it on someone else's, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, go for it. Okay. You know it's coming. I know it's coming, but um, tell tell our listeners what's coming next. Okay. So I'll explain this actually a story that's loosely bridged because I can't really remember it. Um, I think it was, what, 2013, you and I had a conversation about games that look like people, right? Again, really touching what we've kind of been talking about, uh, talking about uh, games that, you know, people are always, all games are autobiographical, uh, yeah, autobiographical. And, yeah. we kind of, you know, you and I made that joke about uh, people looking like, like game developers looking like their games. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> kind of like how people look like their pets. Yeah, people, yeah, well, people do look like their dogs, it's weird. And yeah, I kind of, you know, we, we kind of came to the conclusion that uh, game developers look like their games. So you asked me what would I look like if I was a video game, and I said, Adventurous. Uh, so this is a video game by a developer called Austin Breed. Um, he's made a few other small games, but I think this is definitely his most telling work. Uh, let's just jump into it. <clears throat> Okay, so again, not sure if it's viewable, but I'm a tiny little dot inside that's moving around. So you'll be flashing red dot, right? Flashing a uh, red and white dot. Yep. Very slow. Game ramps up though. Bear with me. This poor Sorry, kid is like melting. Sorry? This poor kid looks like he's melting. He does. Yeah, he does. 
But he still has a great grin on his face. And now, I was the forgotten cell left to die in the flesh of my brother. Oh my god. Oh, okay. So again, the whole, it's just uh, you use the arrow keys, you move around as this flashing, now kind of tetris looking block, collecting these green blocks. You're inside the body of what has been said as your brother. Very bothering. I felt myself become thick and lump, growing into the form that was robbed from me. Oh, okay. Gross. <laughs> this game really speaks to me because it's nothing like what I make, but what I'd love to make, but also not. <laughs> Sweet, these parts. This is getting quite second. gruesome, isn't it? He's, now he's not happy, though. Sorry, to eat. I must continue consuming my host, my ignorant kin. Oh, my God. Now he's kind of like a, a fetus kind of shape. Oh, <laughs> He's not looking happy. His heart's beating faster. What kind of God gives entity just to let me die again in red? Touch behind a kidney and fat. Oh my god. I love you. Oh, I, know. I love you, my sweet brother, my fucking host. Oh my god. Oh Christ. My god, this, this soundtrack is very. Okay. Important. Okay. Oh no. That is terrifying. I really hope with the low frame rate as well. Okay. I never decide wealth or status, just existence. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, existence, let me be known. And that's covetous. Covet covetous. Oh my god. <laughs> that was yeah. a great game to end on. Thank you for showing us that. I'll come back as well. Video games, right? Yeah, so we've just gone for, I feel like, the entire history of Andrew Brophy, plus one really screwed up game to top it all off. So I found that game probably in between all the other ones, and it actually really inspired me. Uh, but again, like, I don't know if you can kind of get the same sort of feeling. It's really serious. It's not funny at all, but I don't know. I try yeah. and take inspiration and flip it, I suppose, and I think that game's really telling of that. I, I look forward to seeing where your future work goes. Thank you. Well, <laughs> bigger stuff, much bigger, more ambitious is the, is the aim. <laughs> all right. Well, we might end it here. So if you have any questions you want to ask Andrew at all, please do tweet him at, at Andrew Brophy on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Or you can ask via the DWF15 hashtag. I just imagine everyone spotted but just why would we play that game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay.